Hi, my name is Kato, and I am kind of rediscovering uh, the sample modeling ensemble and solo strings these days. Uh, I purchased this sample library two years ago, and when I purchased this sample library, I I was excited and I started playing around with it, and I was kind of disappointed. Uh, I couldn't make it work for me, and I kind of couldn't spark creativity with it. Um, but I am rediscovering the qualities of this sample library now. Uh, it was version 1.2 when I purchased it. Uh, now it's version 2.02b, I think. Uh, I don't know what they did with the, the updates because I just played around with it a little bit in the beginning and then I put it aside. Um, I am kind of a knucklehead uh, guitar player and um, I fell in love with the orchestra. So I'm sort of an amateur and uh, back when I purchased this particular library I didn't really know how to, to use it, how to to manipulate the sound and uh, play with the settings and be a little bit creative with uh, reverb and EQ and all of that. Um, so, now I've kind of, uh, I see the quality in this sample library. Uh, there's still things I don't like and I'm going to talk about that. Uh, but I'm going to play a little bit more and uh, show you what I really like, that you can just perform on the keyboard. I am not a keyboard player, I am a guitar player. And um, yeah, I'm just going to show you what I love about this sample library. Yeah, that's what I love about this uh, this sample library from from sample modeling. Uh, you can perform uh, on the keys with a with a breath controller, and you can make it sound sort of uh, realistic with just just uh, a breath controller and playing. And it will switch between legato. It will switch between yeah legato and sustain and and thrill when you do when you perform a thrill it will actually switch to to samples that will uh, sound realistic when you do the, the the performance of a trill so that's what i love and also that you can perform uh, portamento you can con you can control the speed of a portamento uh, using velocity and yeah that's what i really love about this uh, this sample library and um it's the same thing with the ensemble strings, uh, with the controllable portamento and all of that. What I don't like about this sample uh, library is the, and this was the one thing in the beginning when I first purchased the sample library. Um, when I started playing with the, the tremolo, uh, I was kind of, what, <laughs> what kind of sound is this? Um, but I'm going to just play a few uh, notes and you will see what I mean. Yeah. That's the one thing that I really don't like about this sample library. And, uh, and it's both for the ensemble strings and the solo strings. The tremolo sounds um, 
Well, you have a kind of a machine gun effect. You have the <laughs> kind of uh, sound. It's not a uh, it's not a natural sounding thing. So that's the that's the biggest minus with this sample library. And I don't know why they haven't fixed that. Um, yeah. For me, as a sort of an amateur, I've uh, I started collecting sample libraries over a decade ago, and I have played quite a bit with the string libraries. So, I'm not really an amateur, uh, but uh, I do not consider myself a professional with strings and or the orchestra. Um, but this sound is, for me, it's not a good sound. And you have that in the ensemble strings as well. Okay, um, the pizzicatos for the solo strings sounds good. I think mm, there's uh, room for improvement here. <laughs> to, uh, yeah, um, but it sounds good. It sounds good. Uh, it, it's better for the the the, the solo string sounds better with the pizzicatos than the, the ensemble strings. And we have the colenio. Yeah, sounds sounds good. And we also have uh, harmonics. I have to use the, the breath controller for that. Yeah, um, it's good, it's good. Uh, I think it sounds like a flute sometimes, uh, but you can go in, in the settings and, and improve the sound, and you can manipulate the sound a little bit. So, uh, but it sounds, sounds okay, uh, to me at least. Um, with this... Uh, Video, like I said, I'm going to focus on the cellos, and um, I have two two favorites in my collection, two string libraries that I really like, and one is the Cinematic um, Studio strings from Cinematic S Studio series, and I also love the Nashville scoring strings from Audio Ollie. And I think that that's a, a fantastic sounding string library. And I really love the the cellos and the legato patch. So I have loaded that patch here because I wanted to to kind of recreate or match that sound with the sample modeling ensemble cellos here. So I'm going to play a little bit with the with the uh, Nashville scoring strings uh, cellos here, the legato patch. That's a good sounding uh, for me at least. I I love the the more I tend to to gravitate towards the the, the sample libraries that are more dry because I want to to create the the room myself and uh, I haven't done too much with the sound. I have uh, activated the close mics and panned that a little bit to the to the right. And I have also added a little bit of room ambience with the, the Eventide SP2016 reverb. Um, I really love this reverb. Uh, you can create uh, nice sounding room ambience uh, when you have a super dry uh, sample library. You can just add a, more of a room ambience. And also you can push the, the instrument or the players a little bit further back with this p position uh, uh, setting here. So I have that at 20%. Uh, 
so you don't get that um, dry direct sound right in your face you can just push it a little bit back and i have the decay set at uh, 1.4 uh, seconds and i can play a little bit with the reverb uh, bypass <laughs> Yeah, super dry, and you also hear that there's no, um, there's minimum uh, decay here on the reverb, on the room reverb, and, uh, when they have recorded, uh, I think the room is quite dry, but uh, with this reverb and... adds a little bit more ambience to the sound that's i really like that so that's the only thing i've done with the sound so i wanted to match that sound with uh, the ensemble strings from sample modeling i'm doing these videos on the fly uh, i do not script my videos so maybe i'm stumbling a little bit sometimes english is not my first language too i am norwegian so i hope <laughs> i hope you understand what i'm saying um, yeah, uh, so I wanted to construct or match the, the sound of the Nashville scoring strings cellos here. So let's just have a listen to the, the sound that I have um, put together. And I have to use the, the breath control for that. Yeah, so that's what I love about this sample library. Uh, it's the portamento. It's the controllable portamento. Uh, when you play legato, uh, you can control the, the attack and how you play, how you start the note, how you start the... Yeah, I think that's, that's fantastic with the, this library. And you don't have that with the, the cello patch here. Uh, with the, the Nashville scoring strings. Uh, you have just a legato, uh, but you don't have the, the, the portamento um, option. Um, I think there's a patch for that, so, so you need to, to key switch that, but uh, yeah. So what I did with the ensemble strings here, I'm just going to close that. I wanted a larger section and I also wanted to add a little bit of more individuality with the sound. Um, when you load uh, the ensemble strings from sample modeling, um, you just load it up and you play it. It just sounds like one big instrument. That's the one thing that I don't also like about this sample library. It's an, it, you don't have you don't hear individual players and in the real world you on a stage or in a, in uh, in the orchestra you have individual human beings playing an instrument and that's one thing that uh, a lot of the sample libraries out there especially string libraries they don't have that individuality um, so you kind of have to be creative uh, if you want that in the sound so i duplicated the ensemble so i added a second ensemble and i also added two solo cellos uh, the problem when you do that when you duplicate the same the same sound the same patch you will get facing problems even though in here with uh, with uh, the sample modeling ensemble strings you can change the 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 version, the, you can change the instrument, uh, change the timbre. And here I have cello 1, cello E1 uh, in the first ensemble, large. And I have cello 2, 
person uh, in the second ensemble. It's the same kind of sound, it's a little bit different in the timbre, uh, but I think they're using the same building blocks for the sound. And uh, I experienced phasing issues, even though I'm changing the, the, the timbre and choosing a different uh, kind of cello section, uh, I experienced phasing. And phasing is not a good sound. Phasing issues. Uh, and I, I experienced that the same thing with those two um, solo cellos that I have added. And as you can see, I have uh, the solo cellos I've just uh, put, I've, uh, uh, I have mi minus 12 dB uh, on both of them because I just wanted the, I wanted to add individual players in the sound. Uh, but I didn't want this, the, the kind of solo sound right uh, up in your <laughs> in the mix, so I just uh, took it took it down a little bit. Um, yeah, and I panned it to the side. So facing issues I experienced, and uh, what I did to try to fix that was to add delay. I just added this Apple uh, delay. Uh, it comes with uh, the computer works fine and just added a little bit uh, two four milliseconds uh, just to delay uh, the second ensemble uh, compared to the, the first ensemble so if you have this the same the same patch in the sample library uh, trigger at the same time and you don't have a whole bunch of round robins you will experience uh, facing issues. And that's what I experienced here. So this kind of uh, helped, kind of delaying the second, the, the, the second uh, triggering. And uh, I did that with the, both the, the second ensemble that I've added and uh, the two solo cellos. And I have different settings for, for each and that help with the facing, but also help with the, the realism. It added the individuality in, in, the, in the sound. So I'm going to play a little bit more, um, but I'm going to talk about one more thing, one more tip here. Um, I have two MIDI tracks. The first track is for Divisa 1 and the second track is for Divisa 2. So I have that option as well with the, with the two sections. But I added the, in Cubis here, I have uh, a random positioning of the MIDI notes uh, when it's played back. So I have plus 10 and minus 10 uh, PPQ. I think that's what, what's the, what, what it's called. And it just randomizes the the positioning of the MIDI notes. And that also adds a little bit of, of realism when you don't have the, the, the notes being triggered or uh, played exactly at, uh, at the same time. So that's a little tip. And I've exper I have uh, experimented quite a bit with this. And if I go beyond plus 10 and minus 10, I experience strange things with the, with the notes especially with legato and uh, so plus 10 minus 10 works good okay so i'm just going to play uh play a little phrase here and uh, play it back and so you can kind of hear how these tips and tricks um, will help with uh, realism okay Yeah, uh, let's play it back. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Yeah, I'm quite happy with that sound. I had to, uh, I had to uh, EQ EQ quite a bit. Uh, so this is the EQ setting I have, and I had to also kind of try to to fix the facing issues. Try to uh, to uh, to pull down those frequencies that was a problem, and without destroying the sound, without uh, taking the life out of the sound. So. That's what you also have to kind of um, play around with uh, to 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 get the the sound that you want. Um, buying uh, sample libraries and just take your time with the manual and just take your time with the tools and the settings and um, it will really help you uh, creating that that sound that you want instead of. Um, I've so many times I've purchased the sample libraries and load uh, the sample and uh, this is no good and toss it to the side instead of just taking your time with uh, with uh, the tool that you have. Okay, um, I'm going to copy this and duplicate this to the um, to the Nashville scoring strings cello legato patch here because the Nashville scoring strings they uh, they blend well with uh, the sample molding strings because they are both very dry sample uh, libraries and uh, it's just uh, they complement each other uh, yeah very well but i have to i have to copy the the breath cc here over to the the cc1 so let's just uh, do that Yeah, so let's play that all together. I think I have the same um, MIDI modifier here. No, I don't, but that's okay. Even though there's no portamento with the 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 cellos, legato cellos here, uh, doesn't really matter. Uh, it sounds good with the the portamento uh, with the sample molding strings. So these two complement these two libraries complement each other. Uh, yeah, very very well. Uh, yeah. I think that was it. Uh, I'm going to activate the reverb send so you can hear the same thing with the, the whole reverb. So I'm going to play that once more and you can have a listen. Yeah, I think that sounds really good. Um, here, uh, I don't know about you. <laughs> um, I probably, when you start adding violins, adding violas, adding the basses, I'm probably going to have to um, do minor tweaking with the sound and placement. But, uh, yeah. The sample molding strings from yeah the the ensemble strings and the solo strings from sample molding. They do have uh, really good. Uh, there are some qualities here that um, that I really like, and it's especially that you can perform and you can have that um, realistic sounding uh, portamento and legato and um, so also short notes. Uh, I haven't talked about that in this video. Um, 
you have the option in contact to I can show you instead of just talking about it. Let me show you here. Uh, if you go to the instrument, uh, no, I think it's the, the sound control. Here you have a knob CC38. And when you load it, it's just uh, straight up and that's uh, the sustain. It's just the, it's the normal kind of um, sound. But you have the option to, to choose uh, spiccato. A kind of spiccato kind of sound and the other way we have marcato so uh, you have that but you have to you have to do a controller for that you have to do a key switch or uh, or channel switching uh, especially with the ensemble because you have to synchronize when that changes you have to synchronize the ensemble so you have to duplicate the ensemble and put it onto I usually do channel switching, MIDI channel switching, and then I just duplicate the, that section or those channels, and uh, I do channel switching for, for those kinds of different settings uh, using expression maps in Cubase. Um, that's, a, that's a good tip too. Yeah, uh, I think that was it. I think the, um, I hope you got something out of this video. Uh, I'm going to play more with sample modeling strings and I'm going to try to create a whole a whole piece um, I'm not giving up on this library <laughs> I hope they I hope they fix the tremolo because the tremolo is awful uh, I can play a little bit with the uh, it's not too bad when you have added sections and added uh, uh, solo cellos like I've done here. It's not it's not uh, that bad. And if I uh, if I also blend in the Nashville scoring strings with the tremolo patch, I think it sounds good. So, but I hope I hope the I hope they fix fix that. Uh, there's room for improvement. And pizzicato uh, for the ensemble. Not a big fan of that sound. Um, they all the notes, all the players are being triggered at the exact exact same time and that's not realistic um, that's one thing that I also don't really like about the library uh, I want to have more of um, a loose sound because if you have 16 players or 16 violinists and uh, they don't they don't um, do that they play the pizzicato I exactly the, at the same time it's just not uh, happening yeah um, that was it for this video I hope you got something out of it and um, see you in the next one thanks for watching bye for now